The verse is awash with complex ecological systems that not only provide us with resources, but make the known galaxy a more beautiful place to build our future. It is within these systems that our journey has seen us encounter many ascending species. Through exploration, we have seen both the beauty and the destruction that these species can bring. But there are a number of species we have yet to explore that help maintain the precarious equilibrium within each of the systems we discover. Without the fauna of the verse predating on plants and other animals, the landscapes we have come to explore simply would not be the same. So just who or what are the creatures that make the Versus planets full of pristine wilderness, dense forests, deserted wastelands and vast oceans what they are today? One creature more familiar in the verse is the friendly little organism, or flow pet, naturally occurring on the protected planet Zeiss within the Kellogg system. Despite the Fair Chance Act prohibiting outside interference within protected systems, smugglers managed to remove a few of these creatures from their homeworld in the early 30th century. Flow pets soon became an outlawed but popular commodity amongst the more affluent civilians of the UEE. Originally, it was thought that the flow pet would be a good food source, as they were easy to breed, were packed with protein, and had a short lifespan. They were, however, inedible, as they also contained toxic amino acids. Instead, flow pets, who were surprisingly domesticatable, made for excellent pets. After the UEE cracked down on the illegal use of the creatures as pets, a mass release of flow pets onto the streets occurred. Today, large stray populations pop up on many UEE planets, namely in sewers, where they live on a diet of microscopic life. Today, there are more flow pets outside of Zeiss than on it, the species ownership ban was lifted as a result. For planets and systems not protected by the Fair Chance Act, in order to make it fit for humanity to survive, planets must be terraformed. As we saw with the attempts at terraformation of Garan throughout the terraformation process, all life on a planet is destroyed. This brings with it a challenge. As order for humanity to thrive and the ecosystem to rebuild, both flora and fauna must be present. To combat this, when terraformation is complete, non-native species are injected into the planet. Also known as the space cow, the quasi-grazer is a large, warm-blooded herd animal that was originally discovered on the vast plains of Quasi, Terra, but has been commonly transported to most terraform planets in the UEE. They have been chosen as they are a creature of many uses for the UEE. For example, their eggs and meat are consumed, and in more remote sections of space, tanning their skin provides useful protection during the heavy winter. Another creature, known to find home on more than one planet, is the Zipherpod, a soft-shelled invertebrate omnivore native to Leo 1. In their native environments, they spend their time hunting, scavenging for food, and resting. To ensure genetic diversity among the species, Zipherpods spend part of their year in groups, then split off and travel hundreds of kilometers to join other groups during mating season. Known colloquially as blind oni crabs, the zipperpod make this journey by converting surrounding air into a hydrogen-helium mix 
and circulates it within a large hollow cavity. This allows it to float. It then propels itself through the air by expelling gas from its body, which is incredibly light compared to its size. They are something of an invasive species due in part to its large-scale breeding. They lay up to a thousand eggs at a time. Typically found on worlds with hot grassland environments, they have also been known to adapt to more extreme conditions. The UAE prohibits the trading of zephyrpods. In fact, zephyrpod hunting is encouraged by some local governments. But the zephyrpod does have its uses. Hurston has proven particularly hospitable to zephyrpods, where it thrives off the biological waste generated from the settlements. When roasted, the flesh of the zephyrpod becomes white and firm, and the meat has a musty, sweet flavour, making it an abundant and cost-effective food source for poorest inhabitants of Hurston. On Uriel, a settlement within the Oberon system, the harsh surface conditions have forced settlers underground, and in a bid to provide a more sustainable food source, in the 27th century, a civilian introduced the chestnut beetle. Their 70-year dormant, six-month active cycle, and their ability to eat almost anything made them easy to care for. However, these insects were more adaptable than they first appeared. They found a way to survive on the surface and were spreading. What started as a welcomed addition to the locals' diet quickly turned into a serious pest, with the beetle population growing into the millions. Now, like clockwork, the beetles emerge every 70 years and sweep across the planet, devouring anything they can, meaning most civilians remain underground. This may not be as bad as first thought, as if it wasn't for the chestnut beetle keeping the population below ground, the casualties from a recent vandal attack might have been much worse. The Valakar, or sandworm, is another species native to Lear system, this time Lear 3. These gigantic carnivorous worms live within the desert landscapes and have a penchant for destroying settlements, leaving the planet sparsely populated. Only smugglers and outlaws still inhabit Lear 3, keeping ahead of the sandstorms and giant worms by living a nomadic lifestyle. Tokyai, sometimes known as the Rilla Jump Beast, is an arboreal apex predator native to the Xi'an world. Its name is one that means to create genuine fear. Whilst not much is known about the Tokyai, it has been observed to feed on smaller herbivorous forest creatures by gliding from tree to tree, using its formidable claws to latch onto unsuspecting prey. Originally classified as endangered, it is now conserved and flourishing on Koli, a small planet within the Xi'an-controlled system of Elis that has been carefully terraformed as a nature preserve. The Versus creatures are not just restricted to land. In fact, some of the more colourful and intriguing species can be found below sea level. There are a number of species more familiar to some in the verse, as they have either been sold for display within civilian hangars, can be found in our fish tanks, or presented as a gift by the Xi'an. The first is Oshi, a jellyfish found on Noble in the Ellis system. The Oshi have only recently adapted to the lighter pressure closer to the surface of the vast oceans. Secondly, 
and considered to be quite a delicacy in many restaurants, the Thorshu can be found in the colder climates of southern Terra around Quasi. This creature is even more known than the Oshi, as it was also the basis of Waka Grey, the sidekick from a 27th century children's show and currently features on the insignia of the 78th Squadron. Presented to humanity by the Xi'an from their preserves on Koli. We have also had a glimpse of the Menerik, a vibrant kingfish that originates from Elis in the Xi'an Empire. The ribbon fish, or Variovitus, is found on Aramis in the Vega system. They have become a very popular first pet among children, due to the minimal amount of care needed to keep them alive, and the vibrant variety of their coloration. Another creature, prized in fish tanks throughout the galaxy, is a naturally golden animal, which has become symbolic of its homeworld, the Midas fish. You can find the Midas fish naturally on Kassil, a beautiful ocean world, home to one of the most complex aquatic ecospheres in the explored galaxy. With hundreds of thousands of complex species already identified, such as the eerie land crab and the mammalian sea whale, there are still many more lurking in the depths. Prized for their pairing behaviour and their vibrant, contrasting colours, banded vessels are also one of the more popular aquarium fish in the UEE. They should be kept in warm salt water and can grow to be up to 50 centimetres long. In their natural waters, in the warmer areas of the Anasazi Sea on Terra, the banded vessel seldom venture more than 12 metres deep. Naturally carnivorous, however, in captivity they have been bred to encourage docility and to accentuate their deep blue vertical stripes. These stripes help them camouflage among the seaweed and coral of their natural environment. Banded vessels are ambush hunters, preying mainly on smaller fish, macroinvertebrates and zooplankton. They play an important role in their ecosystem, keeping worms and other creatures from overgrazing on vegetation and disrupting delicate coral reefs. Banded vessels form lifelong pairs. Each fish will protect the other from threats assisting hunting, share larger prey, and fend off potential suitors. Whilst we have become accustomed to some aquatic creatures amongst everyday life in the verse, there are some that are much lesser known. One example is a species from Loch, Idris. The Vindel is generally found in shallow water. It feeds on waste and algae that collects at the bottom of rivers. The tentacles on the head allow the fish to dig through the loose rock and soil. As we explore more new worlds, it is inevitable our knowledge of new creatures will too develop and bolster. There are also some species of which we know exist, we may even have had small glimpses of, that we know will have a bigger and perhaps more destructive role in our history. The Boreal Stalker is a genetically engineered life form. It was created by Microtech genetic engineers to fill the apex predator niche within their planet's ecosystem, roaming its tundras, searching for prey.
the pyro crab is a land predator covered by an exoskeleton with four legs and a pair of free movable flangella pyro crabs are able to mimic themselves as stones The storm wall, affectionately known as the space whale, is a flying creature which lives in the atmosphere of Crusader. The carcass of a space whale is around 100 meters long. They are hunted because their body produces a highly valuable resource. Finley the storm wall is also the official mascot of Crusader Industries. Much like the sentient races of which we have discovered, there are also some creatures of the verse we will sadly never encounter. Nu Nu were once located on Armitage. They were once prey for the Vandal, but in a somewhat strange turn of events, the Vandal managed to completely wipe out this valuable food source when they subjected the planet to antimatter attacks. A creature whose survival ended much less recently was the Camposi Magnus. Known as the Lords of the Deep, they were a tusked aquatic predator that lived in the oceans of Ellis IV until roughly 500,000 standard earth years ago, when it is hypothesized from fossil records that an underwater volcanic eruption may have triggered an extinction event that disrupted the Camposi's food chain. Reconstructions of the Camposi revealed that it could grow up to 12 meters in length and typically weighed about 40 tons. It had four eyes, two pairs of jointed mandibles around its mouth and a pair of broad tusks on either side of its head. The teeth along the inside of its jaw and analysis of its bones indicate that it consumed both meat and vegetable matter. With little knowledge of how many creatures have been lost, and more importantly, what led to their demise, it's also hard to predict if whatever occurred could in fact happen again. And so, it is always with caution that we continue our explorations into the unknown. Thank you very much for watching. Do you ever take the time to consider the life that surrounds us all in everyday life? That is what this video is all about. The creatures of the verse, the impact they have on humanity, and the impact humanity may have on them. We've touched upon themes and historical events in this episode, some that may not be entirely clear to you. If you would like to know more about these events, the alien races in the verse, and more about our long and storied history, please consider checking out the Time Capsule and First Contact Law series, where this is covered in much more detail. In addition to this, you will also find shorter episodic events from the day-to-day -day occurrences inside Star Citizen, designed to give you an insight into what life is like inside the verse. All the links to everything I talk about in this video are linked in the video description. Thank you again, and I hope to see you in the verse.